गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर गडाक एस एस फ्रॉम एस एंड डी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिसर्च सेंटर योला सो फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम दी सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फाइनल इयर ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग दैट इज सोलर एंड वाइंड एनर्जी फ्रॉम यूनिट नंबर टू दैट इज सोलर थर्मल सिस्टम एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन वी हैव डिस्कस सम टॉपिक्स ओके सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द यूनिट नंबर टू दैट इज द सोलर सिस्टम एंड एप्लीकेशंस okay so let's see which topics which we have discussed in the last lecture and which topics we are going to see in the today's lecture so in the last lecture we have studied topics related to the what is solar collectors so we have seen in the detail what is solar collector and what is its use then applications of solar collector also we have seen and third point we have seen in the last lecture that is the types of solar thermal collectors all of you understand up to that we have covered in the last lecture so in the today's video we are going to start or we are going to learn the next point that's our flat plate collector analysis evacuated tube collector analysis solar air heater and its types solar distillation and then we are going to learn the last point that is the solar concentrating collector with its different types so in the last video those who have seen the last video we have discussed the different types of solar collectors so basically two types of solar collectors are there first one is the con non concentrating solar thermal collector and second one is a concentrating solar collectors from con non concentrating solar collectors we have seen two types that is a flat plate collectors and evacuated tube collectors and in the next that is the non concentrating solar collectors we have seen four types so in the today's lecture particularly we are going to study the non concentrating types of solar collectors that is a flat plate collectors and evacuated tube collectors basic before starting to see in the details what is a flat plate collectors and what is a evacuated tube collectors just understand or just do the familiar with the what is flat plate collectors and what is a evacuated tube collectors so here i have shown one diagram to you if you are able to see what you are seeing in that diagram that is a flat plate collectors that means that is seeing like the flat plate that why it is called as a flat plate collectors so which components we are seeing in that diagram first one we are seeing the solar radiation so from the sun solar radiations are received to the flat plate collectors then on the top side of the flat plate collector there is a glazing sheets that means the sheets are there for the uh, avoid the break um, breakage from the solar radiation then below that there is a hot water supply from one side and there is a hot water output from the another side that means cold water is supplied and hot water is output from that flat plate collectors so in that there is again some different types of the components are there so first one is a sealed heat. first one is a sealed heat enclosure second one foam or aluminum insulations then heat absorbing razor tubes are there heat absorbing back plates are there that means different types are there so we are going to see that working of that flat plate collectors in the details okay so next one also we have to see from the non concentrating types of solar thermal collector that is a evacuated tube collector that is etc evacuated tube collectors so in the evacuated tube collector if you are see what is the difference between flat plate and evacuated tube collectors that is in the flat plate collectors water come from one side and uh, cold water hot water goes to other side okay so but in the evacuated tube collectors the in the same uh, pipe cold water also in and hot water also out so heat pipes are used in that evacuated tube collector to transfer the heat which is collected from the solar energy and to transfer it to the water for the heating purpose that is nothing but the evacuated tube collectors so i think all of you have got the proper idea or basic idea about the 
flat plate collectors and evacuated tube collectors and what is the difference between flat plate and evacuated tube collectors all of you understand so that's are the two types of the non concentrating tube collectors so in the today's lecture first we are going to see or study in the details that is a non concentrating types of soda collectors all of you understand and in the next lecture we will see particularly concentrating types of collectors that four types all of you understand so we will see in the details what is the uh flat plate collectors what is the working which are the components and what is the evacuated tube collector and its types so friends let's continue with the flat plate and evacuated tube collectors now we will discuss flat plate collectors and from name itself this is the collector surface at which radiations are coming and it this surface absorb the heat of, from the radiations and that heat is absorbed by the tubes and uh, there is a fluid flow from these tubes when these tubes comes in contact with this collector surface and there is a high temperature and the fluid has low temperature so there is a temperature flow from here to the tube and from tube to the fluid in this way the heat is transferred from solar radiations to the collector surface and from collector surface to the fluid okay so this is the basic functioning however uh, to improve the performance there are some modifications the first one is if the absorber becomes black then it will absorb the maximum radiations as we know the, the tendency to absorb the radiations of black is high uh, maximum so we will make this collector surface black second thing the heat cannot be dissipated in the surroundings so there should be heat insulators okay so there should be heat insulations it is our absorber this is insulation insulation and these are the tubes carrying the fluid so we can suggest fluid okay is there any further modification can be done we are collecting the radiations heat from the radiations can be transformed can be collected by absorber the heat absorbed by absorber is transferred to the fluid through the pipe due to temperature difference now to maintain the heat it can be put in a glass cover okay to maintain the temperature inside okay so the radiations are coming uh, like that these are beam radiations there are possibility of diffused radiations as well so in this case direct and diffused both both radiations can be collected by the can be absorbed by the absorber uh, if we try to write few points regarding this then what we can say it absorbs both beam and diffused radiations beam and diffused radiations first point we can say regarding this type of collector and second point what we can say this 
uh, collector surface once we placed at any position then there is no need of tracking like PV system that is roof installed or uh, ground mounted. So we can see here without it can no need of sun tracking. It can perform well without the need of sun tracking as direct and diffuse radiations can be utilized. And third thing, there are no simple complexity, just absorber and the tubes which is flowing the fluid are the main and very simple in construction we can see. So third thing, uh, simple in construction. After the uh, characteristics of the flat plate collectors, let us discuss the uh, basic elements of the collector. So the first one is the uh, absorber surface. So first thing that we can say about the absorber surface, it should be black. Okay. And the second thing that we can say about that, it should be good conductor of heat. And we know the, uh, the copper is very good conductor of heat. However, it is not at the top of the conducting uh, uh, table. Anyway, uh, in cost and conduct conduction, if you compare, then copper is the best suited here. So copper is the good conductor of heat. So we will use copper or uh, if we go to aluminum, even though it is acceptable in cheaper range or steel. So any of these can be used according to the cost of the converter. So the collector surface means absorber surface should be either of copper, aluminum, steel or in one sentence we can say it should be good conductor of heat and it should be blackened. Okay. Second point that we can see the absorber this surface should have an optimum thickness that is 1.22 to 2 millimeter thick. Okay. If it will be more than this, okay, if it will be more than this, then the absorber is the top surface, it will be heated up. Okay. And after that, the conduction through conduction process, heat will be transferred to this. It will take some time to transfer from here to here. And second thing, there will be temperature uh, drop from here to here and uh, it will transfer to the fluid then the temperature difference from here to here will be very uh, large so that is not recommended the thickness should be as minimum as it can be so if it is minimum thickness then the conducting the fluid is attached directly to that and the heat that is absorbed by the absorber directly from the radiations will be transferred from here to the tube directly through conduction process and from tube to the fluid through convection process without any uh, much uh, losing it. So the optimum thickness that we can uh, obtain is 1.2 millimeter. Okay. So it should be black and with of good uh, conductor uh, th thermal conductor and the second thing the thickness should be 1.2, 1 to 2 millimeter only. So the third thing is regarding the tube, the tube thickness should be uh, 1 to 2 centimeter dia. So if its diameter, its, its diameter should be in this range. If it will be more than this, okay, consider more than 2 centimeter, then the fluid that is flowing to that will be collecting heat from the pipe at the area which is connected to the pipe only and the flow of the heat from here to the center will take time and during that 
the uh, fluid will pass out and there will be uneven heating it will be heated up more there will be low heating so in that way water will be not heated up properly if it will be uh, higher thickness so after different analysis and calculations it is obtained that since the density of the radiations is not too high so keeping that thing in mind the thickness is 1 to 2 cm only so if diameter is 1 to 2 cm only then full fluid that is flowing from here will be uh, will be heated up uh, equally uniformly the next component is insulation and the insulation should be 5 to 10 cm thickness if it will be more than that then there that will be without any further advantage it will increase the cost however if it will be less than this thickness then that may not be capable to insulate the heat and heat may loss uh, to the surrounding so in this way the thickness should be op uh, the thickness of insulation is optimum up to 5 to 10 centimeter only